Hi everyone. So uh, as often happens, I'll have an idea for a video and I'll be all getting ready for it. And all of a sudden another idea will pop up and I go, yeah, that's good. I'll do that one first. So I've been prepping a couple of videos. Number one is I want to get back into Marvel before SJW. I've been getting some requests for that. Uh, number two is I really started, I got to start um, debuting uh, Project Re-Rebirth. I've gotten some amazing final designs for Riri's face and her Ironheart armor. Great stuff, but I'm always like, it's one of those things like, th like videos like this are basically like podcasts. I can just slap them out, but I'm kind of like, I want those to be right. So then my, my email inbox is like a mess. So I, I don't just want to put a nice picture without paying the person because the, the Patreon is dollar in, dollar out. <laughs> if I use something for like Project Re-Rebirth, everyone's going to get paid or uh, offered to be paid. I actually had one artist who refused to be paid. Um, the offer is still open though. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, um, but anyway, uh, so I started a Twitter a couple weeks ago because, um, people were, kept asking about it and I had, I had been avoiding it because uh, Twitter can be a real time suck. And, uh, <laughs> these last two days I've just spent way too much time on it. So I gotta, I gotta dial it back to basically using it as a way to, um, receive uh, ideas for videos and things of that nature. But one thing I've been noticing, oh yeah, I started following it more because of uh, San Diego Comic Con, is um, I added a bunch of, basically I only follow artists and, and comic people, mainly to get ideas and kind of like low-key just like laugh at their um, hilarious lives. But um, uh, one thing I just kept noticing over and over and over again is that... Um, there is effectively no future for um, not only just SJW Marvel, but uh, even comics. There is no, uh, there was, there, there used to be <laughs> a lot of um, articles about 10 years ago. They kind of died down once they made the point. And they made this point that there's no more action heroes. Um, uh, that we used to get like a new, you know, crop of action heroes. Usually they would, you know, be about 30 and that's that's where you had done a, enough dumb little movies where you could kind of get a name, you know, Van Damme and um, uh, Schwarzenegger, uh, even Seagal. They all started in their 30s. And then they noticed that our action heroes kept getting older, um, but they weren't replaced by anyone. And, and you know, there have been exceptions. You know, there's been um, superheroes are <laughs> superheroes are not ex analogous to like a, 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 um, like an action uh, hero. Action heroes are like Stallone. So he would play, you know, different characters. Uh, Hugh Jackman is more of an actor who puts on muscle for roles. I would say this about Christian Bale, most of these guys. Um, and you even see that where they kind of like <laughs> like halfway tried to turn um, uh, Hugh Jackman into an action star like way back, like with uh, Swordfish. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's just a really good charismatic actor who can put on muscle, but he's not an action star. So there's basically no action stars. I, I probably Keanu Reeves, who's about fifty. He was the last one, and even he, even he's kind of an asterisk, because um, he kind of did like the muscle thing in the '90s, and then he he uh, Matrix is is um, kind of like you know action star with an asterisk. Even um, uh, John Wick is almost like it's like the uh, it's like a flashback type of thing. So, the, so there, there aren't any, I mean, there's little guys, you know, Scott Adkins, he does little like Netflix movies, but he doesn't have a lot of personality. That's one of the things about is that having personality. And, uh, one of these things about all those action stars is they all had very, very interesting lives. Um, uh, they, they all have a lot of personality and they all have very, very distinct personalities. Nobody would ever confuse you know, uh, they always talk about this, like, there's no diversity in the Avengers. Okay, so you you know, would you ever say the Stallone and Van Damme and Schwarzenegger and Dolph Lundgren, do any four of those white men have remotely the same personality? And you get into them, they're all very, you know, uh, very interesting people. And then, um, because they came from interesting times, you know, they, you know, they, a lot of them grew up very poor, or very extreme conditions. Um, you know, getting a lot of fights, rough and tumble lives. Uh, basically, they were, you know, <laughs> they developed. Um, <laughs> and they're they're not just, you know, 19 their whole life. Uh, and uh, this is very much the same for comics artists and writers. When you read about the, the older comics artists, who all started when they were very young, 
they had very interesting lives. I mean, you know, a lot of them went to war. A lot of them had these like weird side gigs. You know, Jim Stranko was like an escape artist. Um, a lot of them were very, very tough. I mean, you read these um, stories about them interacting in their in their in their youth, and um, these are tough guys from you know inner city and and very interesting people. Um, and um, I'm looking at the crop out there, and I keep bringing up this thing about how creepy and weird it is that almost every single assistant editor at um, Marvel is a woman. And it's very obviously not done on merit. It's very creepily done, um, uh, basically <laughs> diversity checklist, purse puppy type of thinking. And their level of quality is poor. Um, uh, uh, they're just, uh, they're bad with people. They don't do basic things. They, uh, they don't respond to the customers. They actually seem to hate the fans. They're just bad overall. And then I, like I said, I started getting into Twitter and I really started following a lot of these people, especially the younger people. And almost all of the writers, the young writers that are being lauded and promoted, they're almost all women. And I've got to tell you, I'm following all of them and they're basically the same person. I mean, exactly the same. Just as you would never confuse Schwarzenegger and Stallone and you would never confuse Jim Stranko and, and Jack Kirby. If you can tell me the difference between the 20 different Shaved on the side of the head, dyed hair, angry all the time, offended all the time, oversharing, manic, depressive female writers and editors that are on Twitter. I, I'll give you a no prize because it's basically impossible. You could take any one of them. Um, and uh, it's very, very disturbing. You know, everything, you know, in the military, you would, uh, how, how did they say it? What was it? It was like, learn, do, teach. You know, it was basically like, you know, the cycles of life. You're a kid, you're an adult, you're, you know, you're, 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 you're a young adult, you're an adult. First you figure out how to do something, then you do it, then you teach it. Um, we have a younger crop who is basically not being taught and is not teachable. Um, anything you say to them is problematic and triggering and basically some form of abuse or harassment. I saw, I see the stuff I see then there. It's so much mental illness. It's not even funny. I see, I see, uh, you know, unironic uh, tweets of like, uh, I'm thinking of seeing this movie. I hope it's good. I need a woman to review it for me. It's like, what? Or just like, I started sharing on Twitter. I'm going to chill just because it's just going to end up getting me blocked by a million uh, thin skinned comics pros. But I, I'm thinking about there about the, the new hot, you know, the new hot writer. And the new hot writer is Tom King, who I think is like 41 or 42. But. Let's flash back. He's quite famously a former CIA officer for, I think, about eight years or so. He he deployed during the uh, OIF-1, the initial invasion of Iraq in 2003. I'm sure he's done a lot of other interesting things that he can't talk about. Not, you know, Ethan Hunt spy type of stuff. I mean, CIA is mostly talking to people and writing reports. He's lived a life. He's interacted with people. He's, um, and someone's, and people have pointed out, he's very good in social media he's very good at interacting with people it doesn't block people he can take criticism he's an adult um uh and it's so odd and weird to see that so basically the only new <laughs> the only new and even just guys like like uh, jeff lemire or lemire um and uh all of these all the hot new young writers are in their 40s because there's no prospects in their 20s or 30s. There's there's no life experience. There's no um, there's no difference. I mean, uh, there uh, it's a generation that's formed around consens consensus and kicking people out. Um, so they uh, they don't develop unique personalities. I mean, it got really creepy and weird. How I, I all of a sudden I noticed it was the same post. I kept thinking it was the same person posting over and over. It was like a couple dozen of uh, young female creators mostly and their posts were completely indistinguishable from each other um and it, it just got me thinking about there's no future you know i mean i mean you know people are longer lived right now i remember when i was a kid like everyone died at 65 like clockwork <laughs> um um uh, now people <laughs> live 70s 80s 90s it's no big deal so i mean um 
when I say there's no future, there's no future in the traditional thing that every generation is going to have young adults who are going to start, you know, small and build from there. Now Marvel will give someone like Kate Letts, who has no real following, give her, you know, a number one and it dies. And where does she go from there? You know, Uh, there's nowhere to go when you've been handed something, you failed and you've never been, you know, uh, uh, told you failed. Like, these all these guys who um, they failed all like that's how you know you learn you get some of you, you get fired because they're like no you suck at this and then they go down to the minor leagues and you get better at there there is none of this the the there's a very very small crop of people and they basically hire each other and it's a circle you get put on a book they laud you for the being the first transhuman wheat sorghum farmer to write a um uh. 1980s car. This is a real thing. Somebody was celebrating the first trans woman on a 1980s toy licensed comic book. Stop. How about just write a damn good story and stop trying to pat yourself on the back for non accomplishments. So, um, <laughs> the traditional way of growing where young people learn, get better, do it, and then teach it seems to have been broken. Now, our hot young prospects are. <laughs> People in their 40s. <laughs> uh, the good thing is that these people, especially now with the, how healthy people are and how good medicine is, realistically, Tom King could write comics for 40 more years. That would be kind of unprecedented to still be, you know, um, getting hired. Um, because like I said, the weird thing is, as the hot young prospects get older, the leadership positions are getting younger. These almost all female assistant editors at Marvel, they, they're doing a lot. And they have a lot of power, but they have no experience. And they're also not punished for failing. Um, there actually isn't a lot of turnover for them. There's turnover for other people. Um, but it's the same faces a year after year, and they just hand them more and more books. So I'm not sure what's going to happen with this. I mean, tr- you, you know, you can't have a an army without, you know, privates and people going through boot camp. You also can't run an army where people come in and they're ob- automatically a surgeon or a captain. Uh, you also can't have privates who can't be told they're wrong or punished or demoted. Um, uh, I really think this, uh, and this is a whole nother topic. Um, I, I really think that the, the, uh, so Cena Grace, who is the absolutely awful writer of Iceman, terrible, he's terrible with people on social media. He's uh, kind of famous for having a profile pic where he, he says the future is female. And I, I, you know, <laughs> if I think th- that uh, Marvel has definitely decided that their future is female, uh, we saw this in the STCC. Somebody shared with me a incredibly. I was actually going to do a video about it, but I could never finish the video. It was this completely cringy. Um, a couple of cringy videos. So Marvel does these like, um, hey geeksters, the, I like those type of like uh, YouTube channels. I think it's one actual editor and then just two like interns, and. It's really embarrassing because they they just show they're one hundred percent going for a, a female audience, but it's not even a it's not even a good female. It's like going for people who like to put stickers on things. You know what I mean? And then building a publishing company around that. So it, like they were doing like trivia contests, and then they they had an interview with like the writer of Captain Marvel. The the book's doing terrible, and it's absolutely awful. Now, the funny thing is, my videos on it are like quadruple the the readership of it um but people love to hate watch videos about captain marvel squirrel girl and kamala khan i'll probably do a whole video about that later um but it was just embarrassing so you know they're they're interviewing her and um she's been on the book for you know you know about uh six eight months it's doing terrible it's plummeting absolutely plummeting in ratings and yet they're doing the interview and it's like hey you're a girl on a girl thing and i'm a girl and she's a girl girl yeah the book's selling like sixteen thousand copies it's plummeting. Um, everything's falling and um, nobody's saying anything. Um, uh, meanwhile, the like I said, uh, the people who are actually selling it are the are the enemy. Marvel hates that their average uh, reader is a is a you know forty year old white guy, but the guys saving DC are a bunch of forty and fifty year old white guys for the most part. So um, it, 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 just imagine an MBA that just said. Yeah, we're really tired of tall people and black people. <laughs> we're also tired of black fans. We're trying to get away from that. Just, 
what what would you be <laughs> what would you be doing that would be completely insane? And then it was like, ah, you know, it's really problematic that we don't hire unathletic people. Let's look for people who don't like basketball, <laughs> who are not athletic, and they're going to be the coaches. And uh, we'll just make them team captain, you know, because it's not fair that they didn't get the chance before. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, up is down, black is white. Young people are in charge. Old people are the, are the are, you know, the young privates charging the hill, um, and it's crazy. I don't, I really don't see a future in it. I mean, th- there's there was this joke on Thirty Rock. It's like when things are bad, you you got to go lower. You know, you got to go lower and hit rock bottom, and then you go up. And I think we're about to see because there was no so there actually was some self reflection. The only self reflection uh, at San Diego Comic Con. Uh, was from DC. Uh, several people have forwarded me um, a link where basically uh, Dan Didio, uh, Jim Lee, I'm not sure if Jeff Johns is in it. They're basically saying like, hey, we're trying to save the comic industry because it's in trouble. No one else is saying it. Nobody. The, this SDCC was probably the most self-congratulatory. A bunch of people who sell books from five to 15,000 issues per month were congratulating each other um, uh, on social media and literally in award shows. And the entire thing was as a, a rousing success. So, you know, uh, the people who sell 12,000 copies who uh, block 30,000 people on Twitter, they're the winners this year. Um, uh, Dan Didio and, and uh, Jim Lee, they're seeing the sales go down and they're doing something for it. Uh, the, they're, I'm not that crazy about the designs I've seen. Basically, they're saying they're going to diversify by creating new characters. I don't really think anyone cares about diversify. I think they're just saying we're going to create more new stuff um, because they were saying that um, they wanted to, to have the beloved creators, you know, guys like Scott Snyder um, and, and Tom King to really be able to get a hold on, you know, Batman or Superman. Um, uh, but I think they want to, I think this is also to diversify into new talent. DC has been better at, at young talent, but still not, perfect so we'll see how that goes anyway tell me what you think about this video uh tell me about a uh a young a a a young writer let's say 35 or let's say 30 or younger that's getting work and doing good and it's not just a complete mess of hostility and mental illness on social media i seriously can't think of one every time i find a new writer um i'll look them up uh, like Charles Soule, and he's like older than me. Oh yeah, Charles Soule. He's he's another hot new writer at Marvel. He's like forty five years old. Um, Mark Guggenheim, I think he's also like forty five to fifty. Um, all these people are, you know, there's there's no one to go to that's younger. And so this is really what. So tell me if you can think of tell me of a good writer, uh, between the ages of twenty and thirty who's getting work out there. I'd be really interested. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'm gonna try to do um, uh some actual physical uh, comic reviews later today.